talking about the footy show. Thanks to Crazy Johns and the Nissan Bar continue to give us wonderful support. Uh, now, this Sunday at 12 o'clock, the third in the series, the final story. Been looking back at some of the great grand finals over the past 40 years. And this uh, weekend, it's time to focus on the 1991 grand final between the Hawthorne Footy Club and the West Coast Eagles. Topical, of course, the Eagles in the hunt again this season. It was the first grand final at Waverley Park, at first and last, in actual fact. It was the first grand final for the West Coast Eagles. And while the battle that was playing out on the ground was an intriguing story, there was another more personal battle taking place between a couple of very significant players who we'll talk to in a moment. But before we do, let's take a look at what you're going to see Sunday. It's a fight on in mid squares and Jenkins in the centre square. This is going on. And Brereton's also getting involved with McKenna and Hayne Waring. Chris Lewis getting heavily involved with Ray Jenky. Back in those days, you know, racial vilification. Gee, I don't think the two words had ever been used together. So we went and gave it to Chris Lewis. And I reckon that boiled over. Oh, look, it cut pretty deep. Yeah. Oh, I said I was only a young boy trying to go out and do what I did best and but I'd never really experienced any of that sort of stuff until I played AFL. Chris Lewis's greatest strength was his ability to cope with, with that type of pressure, which was the norm in those days. Absolutely disgraceful. I don't think errors have anything to do with it. Black Sea and all this sort of stuff. The crowd were quite vocal in that sort of area, which was always a bit, um, a bit upsetting. Only now in this day and age do we understand what we've done. I've apologised to Chris Lewis since. Pretty dark sort of memory of it and something that I'm not proud of. If Dermy needs to come out and say that to make himself feel better, well, good on him. Probably a recognition and a, an admission of a bloke that's fair dinkum about understanding what, what he may have done in the past and trying to right a wrong. Chris was reported on a couple of occasions. In my mind, I have no doubt that he was vilified. After getting suspended and not being able to play because of retaliating and all that sort of stuff, you, you just sort of learn to put up with it. We accepted it, and we, we've got a lot to pay for that as a nation, as a, as a, as a league, and as individuals. We was a little bit disappointed that we probably didn't, as a club, push the issue a bit further. But I think it was one of those areas that we all didn't want to go to because it was a bit prickly. Football wore him down. And from a young man, when I first went to that football club, a big, beautiful big smile, that become more and more tested through his career and more the shame. We look back now and sort of wonder, or how did that happen? Just thank God we've improved as a sport. Welcome back to the footy show. Uh, very sensitive issues to deal with out of that game and issues that uh, continue to raise their head in our game, which is one of the reasons we've been fortunate to get two of the gentlemen involved in that particular story on the program tonight. Please welcome Chris Lewis and also Dermot Brereton. Welcome, boys. We're going to get to you shortly, intimately involved, and uh, I also don't want to excuse myself from this topic as either because um, I was also involved in a similar situation with Chris, and I've written about and spoken about previously and uh, understand exactly what he was going through now, having spoken to him over the journey. It's a, it is a really sensitive issue, and I guess, Louis, it's great to have you here, and we applaud you for coming on because... As much as we continue to educate people and as much as we continue to talk about it, these things still continue in the game today. And we've had issues this year with Lance, <coughs> sorry, Lance Franklin and Mad Jack Dorr, and even at the weekend, Nick Nat knew he abused from over the fence. So the really interesting thing out of that for me was Mick Malthouse said, and I'm reading this, you came into the game as a happy-go-lucky young man, but you left as something completely different. Um, the racial taunts you suffered must have had a, a major impact on your footy career, and um, that's why we're here today. Tell us about you know, that experience. Uh, oh, look, he's probably probably right to a certain extent. Um, as a just a young fella growing up, all you want to do is play footy. And uh, look, I'd, I'd never come across any of that sort of stuff until I played uh, well, was VFL back then. So um, yeah, it was an interesting learning curve, and, and certainly there was uh, you know situations and times where uh, your focus was taken off 
the thing that you, you love the most and, and probably what you like to think that you, you're good at. So, yeah, it was, a, it was an interesting time. But, look, we, we sort of battled through that and, and, and obviously the, the things that are put in place these days have... Uh, uh, help young blokes come through with, with a you know bit bit, bit of a uh, easier transition. Well, Louis, I think uh, Mick's words were with a beautiful big smile. I knew you when you had a beautiful big yeah, smile yeah. because, of course, you, my dad played with your dad yep. for Claremont, yep. and then you played a lot of football with my brother for Claremont. The Lewis family has a huge heritage of, of amazing football in the West. You said you didn't experience it to the VFL. Is that because in the waffle, the the aboriginality of the game over there had been really prevalent for 50, 60 years, you know, and, and whereas in the Fairfell, we got the great Michael Long in the audience, it's not till more recent times that we've seen so many of the magnificent Aboriginal footballers. Yeah, look, that probably could be the case, you know, and uh, look, some of the, 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 the blokes that changed the game, you know, Farmer and Cable, have, have, you know, were in that, that league, so uh, there was, uh, I suppose WA footy was a little bit more you know, used to seeing Indigenous fellas mm-hmm. running around. But, look, I, I dare say that it probably didn't happen on the track over there as well. But, uh, yeah, like you said, we, we, it was a bit of a learning phase. And I, I'd like to think that uh, the powers to be in the game and, and people who are involved and with, with football clubs are a little bit more wiser and a little bit more uh, prone to doing the right thing, which is uh, pretty important. Now, Dermot, I know you very well, and I know you are genuinely remorseful for that era. Was it a case just then of winning at all costs and any rules went and we've learnt and moved on, or what stimulated or motivated you to do that? I would suggest just the fact that it might have been gamesmanship. Well, there was a fair bit of gamesmanship in it. Um, We went into that game and Chris Lewis was our number one target that we thought was there a real impetus as a team. He was a fantastic player, an extraordinary player. Um, I won't mention the team, but we got word from a team that Louis had been put off his game by taunts, racial, based. And uh, so we thought anything to try and curb this bloke's brilliance. So myself, some other people, and when, when he crossed paths, you'd, you'd say something to him. Footy, on the other hand, footy's been fantastic for this nation, whereby everybody runs onto the field equal, and now through understanding racism and bringing a, to a wider scope just the damage that it does, I'm incredibly well educated on it now. I wasn't then. Unfortunately, our era was the one that went through and, uh, and we're still committing those, those crimes, of um, those verbal crimes. So. We're much better educated now, and I, I, I've said it to Chris before, and I've said it publicly, you know, I profusely um, apologise for what we did in those days. At what, at what stage, Dan? Um, the game was in 1991. At what, you know, when did you, did the penny drop, for want of a better term, and at what stage did you then, and how did you go about seeking Chris? Well, out? we always knew that it was going to be hurtful. I mean, that's what you do it because you think it's going to put a champion like this off his game. Uh, otherwise you wouldn't be doing it. You know, if it's not going to have any impact, you're not going to be doing it. So to the extent that it hits home, we didn't understand. In the years thereafter it became uh, we got better education I suppose. I was just sort of longing on the I played with a great mate, Damien Monkhurst, who, when I went to Collingwood, and he, there's not a racist bone in his body. And what he said was racist, and he is of the same opinion as me. He was as well educated going into that era as any of us, or as poorly educated. And he came out of that era very well educated on it. And uh, yeah, as I say, footy's been very good for all of us that we've we've actually taken the steps to actually learn that education. So, Louis, this, this is what interests me, because Gary mentioned before about the, the instances we've seen this year, you know, with Buddy Franklin uh, down in Launceston, you know, Majak Dor at our club in, in a VFL game, Nick Natanui on the weekend, we saw uh, a, a player for uh, the Gold Coast have to go through it on the field and a player be suspended for four weeks on the back of it. 
at the time we all thought that you know that's why the great Michael Long and Nicky Winmar and Jimmy Cracker and you know the, the real blokes that bore the brunt of this did so that none of this rubbish should happen anymore. Are we strong enough on it? Is the message clear enough right now? Oh look, I I, I think probably in the last four or five years it's sort of uh, been sort of not in the in the, in the public eye or in the media's eye, and it's probably this year it's sort of reared its head again. So. Um, you know, it's a, it's a continual sort of education progress that, that you know we, or and all the people involved with footy and, and in a in a position of power need to keep reinstating to their players or their supporters. You know, it's probably a bit harder to do those things with your supporters. But look, you're at a ground with uh, 90,000 people, and if some yobbo wants to say something to that effect, surely the person next door needs to be able to stand up and say, "Look, mate, you need to just." Settle down, or uh, you know, watch what you're saying. So, you know, there's a, uh, you know, there'll be a guy that'll play 300 game on Friday night. That's just an ornament to the game, and he's a dual Brownlow medalist. And you know, we need to look at those positive things. What Indigenous p- players and, and people have done in the past, like, like Longy and, and every other person who's played AFL, VFL footy, or even in just in general public. So, um, you know, and. Look, at the end of the day, we all the one thing we all do have in common is footy. So, and it does have a look. It does have a strong effect because it's not just putting people off their games. It's about the social structure of a town or a community or society. Society, you know, if you, you know, a young person may take the wrong way, and you know, could be a lot more than losing the game of footy. It could end up in losing have a loss of life. So have you been know. a mentor to uh, any of the current players? Have you spoken to someone oh, like look, Nick, I, Nat Nui? No, I haven't. I, well, he's too tall for me to talk to. Would you feel but, embarrassed uh, speaking to him or you just nah, let them work I've, it out themselves? Look, one of the, um, the fortunate things I did in the last five or six years was uh, have a little bit to do with young Jeff Garlett, um, Jamie Bunnell and, and uh, young Jetta coming through the Swan Districts Footy Club and, and we, we sort of spoke about a few of those things. But uh, look, to see those guys get in the position where they are and not have to put up with the things that past players may have had to put up with is, is, is good. And look, we just need to keep... You know, I think Harry said something about education and, and you know, just making it aware and, and just being fed to income about it. And um, look, it's... it's it's a great game of footy. Why spoil it? Hey, never true word spoken. Doom and Louis, we appreciate you both coming in. As we said, it, it plays itself out, and it's a big part of this um, this story that's on on Sunday. And look, a lot of people at home will be watching this. Lots of people watching this, and and you probably think, oh well, it's aimed at the Nat Newies of the world and the Mad Jack Dawes and all these elite players. And that is absolutely right. We need to be really vigilant. But this has played out every Saturday afternoon all around the country at different levels, whether it be in the outback or whether it be country Victoria or junior level, whatever the, the case may be. And, and unashamedly, that's why you, you guys are on and, and we, we need to be vigilant and we need to continue to work really hard at it. And it's, it's not us you know, trying to be wholly moralistic. It's about what's right, fundamentally what is right. And as I said, I put my hand high in the air. I, I was like Dermot and a lot of our players of our era were the same and hopefully we're better educated and we're better for the, for the whole process. So none of these people deserve to be fil- uh, vilified. That is the bottom line. And uh, all levels of the game, community in general, it's got to be stopped and we've got to do our bit to, to force some change. And we can do it. Let's not put it off any longer. So we appreciate you guys for coming in. Chris Lewis and Dermot Burton, two of the great... Through the breaks of AFL footy, no doubt about it. We're going to take a break. Back, in, uh, back with more of the footy show after this. Just before uh, we throw back to you, yes. we need to say that we saw this man earlier, Michael Long, ladies and gentlemen, the great man. Norm Smith, Weddle winning Premiership superstar. Now, Longy. We saw you how long? Two, a month or so ago? About ten weeks. Okay, and uh, the uh, the goal at that stage was to lose ten kilos, so yeah. a kilo a week. Yeah. Now you can tell us that you've lost how much? Oh, up to seventeen kilos. Yeah. Seventeen <laughs> kilos. So just a tick under twenty, uh, Jen for men. So how do you go about it? This is obviously Jenny Craig. Oh, look, it was really just a great support from you know the people at Jenny Craig and. You know, the coaching along the way. I must thank uh, Amy Smith and you know, crew Adele and, and obviously Jess Frawley, who, who the support you get along the way. And obviously it's, it's been the food and gentlemen trying to promote that 
the food has really been making the healthy choices, Jane, but that's really what it's about. 17 kilos in 10 weeks. You're an absolute star. Great to see Louie looking so good too, wasn't it? It is. We'll get him on it as well. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but it is great to see Chrissy. Hey, Longy, you're a star. Well Thanks, done. Jane. Great Thanks to see you. Anytime on the